All right, guys, welcome to Classic TV Facts and Trivia. Thank you for being here. Today's video is on Mr. Carol O'Connor, uh, Archie Bunker. And uh, I'm going to give you, uh, I believe it's 12 things, 12 facts about the man who played Archie Bunker. These are pretty cool. And we'll start with the early days. Born John Carroll O'Connor on August the 2nd, 1924, in New York City, the oldest of three sons. He enrolled at North Carolina's Wake Forest University, he dropped out to enlist in the United States Navy, from which he was rejected. Instead, he was a part of the U.S. Merchant Marine Academy for a time before becoming a merchant seaman and serving as a United States Merchant Marine during World War II. He went from Montana to Ireland. Following World War II, O'Connor enrolled at the University of Montana, where he became an editor of the student newspaper, met his future wife, Nancy Fields, before leaving for Ireland to help his brother, Hugh, get into medical school. While there, he enrolled at the University of College in Dublin. A lot happened there. Upon his graduation, Nancy Fields came to Ireland, and the two were married on July 28th, 51. And while O'Connor had no interest in becoming an actor, instead envisioning himself a professor of European history, he actually did do some acting while there and was discovered by producer Sheila Richards, who got him involved with Dublin's Irish players. As he would tell the LA Times in 1972, the press said, I was the only American actor who ever worked in Ireland who could perform an Irish part faithfully, and they were correct. His early roles. Returning to America, he got his start in an off-Broadway production of James Joyce's Ulysses, directed by Burgess Meredith, yes, the Penguin from the Adam West Batman TV show, and Mickey from the Rocky franchise. Uh, followed a year later by a revival of Clifford Odette's Big Knife. He would also appear in 20 movies between 1958's The Defiant Ones and 1971's Doctor's Wives. Wives. Additionally, he made his television debut in 1951 TV movie The White-Headed Boy, and then between 1960 and 71 starred in several others and made numerous episodic guest appearances. Uh, his character Archie Bunker in All in the Family. Television made a major transition between the late 60s and early 70s, and the writer-producer Norman Lear was leading the way with All in the Family, which originally aired from 71 to 79. Looking at modern-day America through the eyes of conservative Archie Bunker and his wife Edith Bunker, and their liberal daughter Gloria and their ultra-liberal son-in-law Mike Meathead Stivick, uh, the show was not only a genuine exploration of the generation gap and changing mores, but tapped into everything from Vietnam War to racism, homophobia, and criticizing the presidency at, the same, at that time would be Nixon's, uh, while breaking various taboos in the medium along the way. And he was not trying to make Archie Bunker lovable. On the Family was enormously popular, particularly Archie Bunker. Though Carol O'Connor had no illusions about the character, Candidly given an interview on the Redlands Daily Facts in 1972 in which he reflected, I don't know how many Americans are as short-sighted as Archie. He's an ignorant man. He's popular on TV because viewers enjoy watching him. But I don't think many of them would have him for a friend or feel they could share his traits. Remember, Archie's a victim, too. He's a victim of his own background and education. His thinking was shaped at an early age when he was insulated with bigotry. He got it from his parents. I'm not making Archie lovable, he added. I'm making him a human being, and there's always an element of love in a human being. Archie Bunker's place. Well, Sally, with Sally Struthers and Rob Reiner ready to move on from the sitcom on the family, and Gene Stable and to follow not long after, O'Connor convinced Norman Lear to allow him to spin off the Archie Bunker character into a series of Archie Bunker's place, which saw the character running a bar. That show ran until 83. Uh, in the Heat of the Night, starring Carol O'Connor. Carol O'Connor's next major role was in television version of the crime drama In the Heat of the Night, on which he also served as executive producer, which aired from 1988 to 1995. The 67 film of the same name won five Academy Awards, including Best Picture of the Year and Best Actor for Rod Steiger, who originated the role as Sheriff Bill Gillespie. When well, we're introduced uh, to that Gillespie, he's like many other people of Sparta, Mississippi, are racist and have no use for visiting Detective Virgil Tibbs. By the end of the film, though, Gillespie has gone through an attitude adjustment. In the television series, uh, Tibbs now plays a, uh, returns to the fictional Sparta for his mother's funeral and is convinced by the town's mayor to stay as chief of detectives, where he works once again with Gillespie to solve crimes. The difference between Archie Bunker and Bill Gillespie? Not surprisingly, given the apparent similarities between Archie Bunker and Bill Gillespie, O'Connor was asked about it. 
gave an interview on to Santa Monica, to Santa California, the signal in 1989, in which he said Rod Steiger's version was closer to Archie Bunker. Rod played him much tougher with the 1960s and Gillespie had to reflect that period. Today, the South is an entirely different place and my interpretation of Gillespie reflects that. He added that the two characters came from very different cultural backgrounds with their similarities really only stemming from the fact that the same actor played both. Said O'Connor, Archie would never give in or admit he was wrong. He's still carrying his old prejudices around. Gillespie's more intelligent. He understands that the old prejudices must be shucked off a little by little. It should be noted that in 1989, in the middle of the run, in the heat of the night, Carl O'Connor was made an honorary, uh, honorary at the Emmy Awards Hall of Fame. Uh, he took on recurring roles. As in the heat of the night came to an end, O'Connor appeared in a couple of movies. Uh, 1998's Gideon and 2000's Return to Me. The 1999 TV movie, 36 Hours to Die, and had a recurring role as Jake Gordon on six episodes of the original version of Party of Five and four episodes of Mad About You, on which he played Jamie Buchanan, played by Helen Hunt, played her father, Gus Stemple, opposite Carol Burnett as her mother, Teresa. Carl O'Connor had a challenging personal life. While O'Connor's marriage to Nancy Field was a happy one, and he was with her from the time they got married until his death, the challenge they had was with their son, Hugh, adopted by the couple in 1962, while O'Connor was filming Cleopatra and named after his brother, who had died the previous year in a motorcycle accident. Hugh played Officer Lonnie Jameson on the heat of, in the heat of the night, and sadly he suffered from a major drug addiction, and on March 28, 1995, committed suicide. Devastated O'Connor went public in a campaign against Hugh's drug dealer, a man named Harry Persingen who uh, failed in his efforts to respond with a defamation lawsuit against the actor, who in turn commented to the uh, media that there isn't a day I don't think of you and I want him back and miss him. I'll feel that way until I'm not here anymore. Carol O'Connor was best friends with Larry Hagman. This may seem unlikely on some level, but O'Connor and I Dream of Jeannie and Dallas star Larry Hagman were best friends. Having met in 59 when the latter was starring on Broadway and God and Kate Murphy, and the former was serving as an assistant stage manager on the show. They were both struggling young actors at the time and rented New York City apartments near each other, remaining close through the years. His legacy lives on. On June 21st, uh, 2001, Carol O'Connor died at the age of 76 from a heart attack as a result of complications from diabetes. Those attending the funeral included his family, Rob Reiner, Sally Struthers, Norman Lear, and Larry Hagman. Back in 1989, he shared what... Uh, that he knew the image of Archie Bunker was one that he would never shake, and he was actually fine with that, commenting, I don't want to escape Archie Bunker. I love Archie. Follows me all over the world. It's a wonderful image. Probably the best I've ever played. And there you go. I know this is kind of long, but I love Carol O'Connor. Uh, never did like the idea of... I loved all the family. I loved the show, but it's always... The guy on the right, he's terrible and he's a racist. And, and, and the guy on the left, you know, is educated. And he's like, you know, and the only good thing about it was, was they exaggerated the crap out of it, you know. But it's always the guy on the right that's always this terrible racist. And, you know, it's not the way it is. I mean, people are racist on both sides and people are educated on both sides. But Hollywood's trying to make it make one way, you know. Anyway. My little rant. No, we're not really a rant. I don't really care, but <laughs> that's what I always saw from it. But I love the show. Love, love, love all the family. That's all I got for you guys. I hope you enjoyed this. Please don't forget to subscribe if you have not yet. Please like this video. You guys have a great day. God bless you. And I'm praying for you.